This is our buggy horse, Misty. She's a 14-year-old Pasifino. We got her a few years ago. We also use her as a broodmare. She's uh, bred right now to a draft stallion. She gave, uh, she folded a filly last year. It's about nine months old right now. And we're hoping for another one from the same stud to have a good match. She's not a great road buggy horse because she's far too energetic. She wants to pull fast and hard and she wants to go. But around the farm, for pulling a two-wheel buggy that we use like a UTV, this horse is perfect. She'll get you there. She was relatively inexpensive. She puts babies on the ground. Good horse. All right. You gotta have a harness if you want to have a buggy. This is a collar, this is a collar pad. And this is what or where the pressure from pulling the buggy is or is on the horse anyway. So we strap this around their shoulders, get the pad in place, make sure she's comfortable. And that's what holds these guys. These are the Hames. The Hames strap onto the collar and these tugs strap onto the buggy and they tug the buggy around. Back. 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 Good. Misty knows her commands. But she can't wait to go run. <laughs> so this is pinched onto the collar. Horse doesn't feel that. That's all born on the collar. And for the moment, I'm just going to throw these tugs on her back. Next up is her bridle. Bridle and bit. Come on, this. Come on. Come on, girl. Back. 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 She just had her breakfast and she's not really interested in working. Chain goes under. Well, bit goes in her mouth. She takes the bit fine. She does this every day. So she knows the drill. Right? Yeah. Neck latch goes around. Hold that on. Always make room for your hand underneath so that you don't strangle the horse. And this is the harness. Not very much compared to a draft horse harness for pulling big equipment. This is just a, a little harness for pulling a buggy and a couple of people around. Keep a pad under both um, areas of pressure. This pad here goes around her rump. This is called the britching. There's a leather strap that comes back and attaches here, or anywhere you can actually, to so keep her head up and keep everything lined up. And then this goes around her tail so nothing falls off. I forget what they call this too. Goes around her tail. And as you can see, Misty's done this a time or two, maybe a couple hundred times. She knows the deal. She's okay. Good girl. Okay. Belly strap, just like on a saddle.
this strap, I'll show you what that does in a moment. I'm going to put the buggy on her now. So, here's our two wheel buggy. We got a four wheeler there. It's not four wheel drive, it's all horse drive. But uh, it has lights for if we go on the road, we can put our flashes on so nobody kills us. People drive very fast here, like everywhere. And uh, here we go. The shafts go on these little holders here on either side of the horse. Hold on, this And then we attach three things. The tugs go back to the buggy. This is what pulls the buggy. The shaft strap goes to the bridging. This is what holds the buggy back when you go downhill is her butt. And lastly, on this side, Put a rain on. So you have a tug, shaft strap to the bridging, and a rain, and this side is secure. The rain goes through these rings to keep everything straight going back to the driver. And by the way, that's where the idea of driving a car came from. They called this driving horses forward, and it, it just kind of came over to automobile use. So same thing on this side, we grab the tug, pull it back here. As you can come back here, you can see this. This bar here is movable a little bit. We put straps on here to stop it moving from too much. But this is the function. Oh, I've got the wrong one, that's why. The function for steering the buggy, moving the buggy over the ground. There we go. Now we do the bridging strap, or the shaft bridging strap, and the other rein. Now, we clip the reins together in the back so that we don't drop them. You don't want to be going 20 miles an hour with your horse across the pasture and not have any reins. That would be very bad. So we clip them together in the back, run them through. Clip it onto her bit ring, and that horse and buggy is ready to go. I'm gonna go load up some feed, so we'll feed my calves, and we'll go for a ride over and, and feed everybody and say hi to them. Oh, I forgot one more thing. This is important. <laughs> uh, I would have seen it before I left, but this strap stops the buggy from going backwards like that, okay? So, it's not very high tech. It's just a long leather belt that goes around both sides of the pole, the um, shaft straps, excuse me. <clears throat> it's on here backwards. Yeah, so that's how you do it. Come around, and we're just chewing up some leather, because some horses are bigger than others, so you have to have some length here compensate for their size, buckle it in, same on the other side, <clears throat> now we grass feed our cattle, they're not on a feedlot here. But I feed them a tiny bit of feed every day, just so they like me and so they come when I call. You want your cattle to know you and to come when you call them. You don't have to go out in the field and get them. If you don't feed them, they won't care about you. So I'm going to go get a bucket of feed. Back in a moment. And we'll go feed our cattle.
we are off. The show will untie us. Show please untie the horse. That's it. Come on, Missy. I'm Greg Jeffers, author of the best-selling book, Prosperous Homesteading. I'm an author, writer, blogger, and homesteader. And this is my labor of love. My latest novel, Seven Years of Famine, is available now at Amazon. Thank you.